Hi, it's Mike Levin, and I'm going to get to one of the most involved parts of this, which is putting in the correct parameter values. But first, I want to do a quick bit of cleanup, because globs.funks is only used up here, uh, and it's not necessary again, and it'll just mess up, you know, all the globals that I'm keeping track of. So I'm just going to replace that with uh, something that exists just briefly here. Funks and globs in front of it, and then we change it here. Change it here, and I'm going to change this because I don't like the way searching on it is the same in these two words up to that point. So it's going to be trans funk and I'll find the other uh, occurrence of funks of what it used to be uh, uh, trans yeah that's it that becomes trans funks Okay, GG to jump to the top. And uh, one last thing, have the And we don't need this one anymore. And this becomes transforms. Make sure it all runs the way it should. Here, funk one, fifty seven eval funk. Go to the miss. Trans funk. Trans funk. GG. Trans funk. That looks correct. Did I miss something? Okay, that was just a misspelling. I pause and I think through next steps. Okay, I'm back from thinking, and my uh, determination is that the complexity of what's going on here is going to very much deserve its own function. So right now it's these X's here. And so what I'll do is I'll just replace that with a third percent S. And let's make up a name for that now. This is the arc valves. Arc valve, singular. And then uh, for arg in fars, it's going to have to be on a row by row basis. Arg val equals the output of some function. We'll call it uh, get arg val. And for now, I'll just open and close. And we'll set a new function called def get arg val. Open, close, colon, and it will return, uh, let's just say, um, s eggs, spam and eggs. So when we run this, the triple X's should be replaced by eggs. And it is. Next step, <clears throat> well, we're certainly going to have to feed some uh, values to get argval. And the things it's going to need is the particular arguments that, it, that it's on. It's an arg. And it's going to, uh, well, we can sort of simplify the function by feeding the values in here. 
uh, if there's a default. So we know there's a default by taking f args and feeding an arg into it. And now we could do this in the function itself, but by doing it here, it simplifies what we're going to be looking at in the function. And uh, finally, we need the all the values of the row it's actually uh, processing. We're not going to be able to do this without the entire row, and that's called a row. And uh, got three things now in our. We need a, a name for this argval def. It's def. It's a default argval. Def argval and a row. So we've got our function API, but we want it to make sure we're not making stupid mistakes. Okay. Now instead of returning eggs, I'm going to try returning the default value. When it has a default value, it will return it. In fact, everything has a default value, even if it's none. Exactly. And now we're only looking at func2. This would now start to apply to uh, func1 as well, but I guess we'll keep our blinders on and look at func2 because it makes us handle all situations and it's less output to look at each time we test. Now we've got a nice isolated place. When param1 equals none, we have to scan the row to see if it's been provided. In fact, we have to scan the row to see if it's provided in every case. So let's handle that too. <clears throat> So what we're doing is we're looking to see if uh, there is a value in the column by the name of the arg. So, oh, we may need caldex in here as well. Yeah, I believe we do need uh, caldex. In fact, it's kind of the most important thing. So I'll make that the first guy there. And I know that'll work correctly, but I actually want to return the value that's found in that location now. Let's see if that's possible. We're going to feed, uh, we have the argument name, we have the column that we're on, so for each argument that's being caught, we get up to func2, for example. In func2, we're going to step through each of its arguments, param1, param2. So we need to be able to feed in... Uh, oh, that's very interesting. I made my frgs with a caldex instead of a function name. Okay, actually I got confused. We we don't need call decks at all, uh, but we, what we are going to do is going to step through uh, each item in the global row one object. So it's for a call in globs.row1. But we, we need an index here. This is where, where the index comes in. So it's a call index, comma, a call in enumerate globs.row1, colon. Now this is going to be a lot of output to look at, and I'm going to try and uh, not have to do that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that return line entirely so I can think most clearly about this. <sighs> For call index in X, let's just call it call dex. For call dex in a call. For call dex comma a call in a new rate globs.row1. 
if a cal equal equals an arg. Now remember, it's always going to be lowercase here, but it might not be lowercase here. Uh, let's take care of that. We're going to uh, deal with all internal stuff. Let's see, where is uh, an arg first up here? For an arg and f args. An arg equals an arg dot lower. Uh, if a cow, we're just going to uh, print it because we hit a case where the uh, value returned from the column is the same thing as the argument that was provided. Now let's just see how I screwed things up. Should just show a lot of hits. Yay! Okay. Ah, getting very close here. Is two hits correct? Yes. Yes. It is. And uh, we're not returning anything. We want to, let's see, we want to return the value that's in the same caldex as that row that got fed in. So a row caldex. And we want to return that. Could this possibly be the answer? Oh my goodness, big, 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 giant step forward. This could be evaled right now in its current shape, except that the nuns are string values. We can't allow that. We've got to capture nuns, handle, handle them special, and uh, use a default value when provided. Okay, this is a good place to cut this off. Uh, the topic here. Uh, what is it? What did we even do? Uh, that's the problem in optimizing these YouTube videos. The concepts are becoming so abstract, it's nothing anyone searches on. All of this only makes sense in the context of either following it step by step or having the larger vision of where I'm going with this project. So if you see what I'm doing, I would really appreciate comments. Uh, otherwise, I'll just wait till the project's done and people can see the finished thing pulled out of the oven and go, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, well, anyway, thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon, and please subscribe.